Yeah, all these guys and their fake burnouts, but you're not doing a burnout unless there's a smoldering pile left behind after. That's a burnout. It's time to take a break from Chevrolet products. I've been fighting with this Duramax, hard to make it run. Been fighting with my derby truck, pretty much impossible to make it run. Uh, I'm tired of Chev for a bit. The only Chev I've got that runs is the 6.2 diesel. And uh, that doesn't say much. But uh, I got given this from the Dimsdale Wrecking Yard. And uh, he didn't know if it ran or drove. And I still don't know if it runs or drives. It's been shot a couple times. I'm not going to say by who. It definitely wasn't me. I wouldn't do such a thing. But uh, the beauty of this thing is it's a 300 that pretty much ensures that if it's not seized it will run so this thing was probably destined to end up a demo derby truck but i don't know if it runs and drives so we're gonna make it run and drive and then from there i'll decide what i'm gonna do with it probably bag on it at least a burnout there's nothing worse than barely getting a truck into the shop with the skid steer and seeing that you've already lost all the transmission fluid. Now at first, I thought I had hurt something, but then I realized a while back, I stole the drive shaft out of another, out of this truck for another truck, which means I'm gonna have to take the drive shaft back off the other truck for this truck, but that's fine. So I'm stealing parts out of this thing, and yes, it's gonna run and drive and do burnouts, but I'm stealing parts out of it for Heinz Creek for the truck with the blower because you never know when you're going to need a fucking headlight or a signal light or front light components. So I'm going to steal the odd things and I'm going through the front, the engine and the, or sorry, the interior and look what I find an Alan Jackson cassette tape and it's in good shape. That right there is worth the uh, hauling the truck home. So I decided to vacuum all the glass out of this thing and uh, apparently I need a new vacuum. It, uh, it vacuumed for about three seconds before it caught fire. So we just put in a battery, good battery connection sort of. Uh, we know it's got some transmission fluid. The engine oil is good, the coolant's good. Let's try and start this bad boy. I'm sure something's wrong with it, otherwise why would it have been parked? But it was last on the road in 2010, which is a really, really good sign, except that I've been shooting at it. Ah, battery connections. I don't know how that's possible with my excellent battery connections. <clears throat> well, they're good. Might need some solenoid action. Well, I apparently have work to do. All right, it's hard to use a screwdriver on this one. And someone shot the ignition switch on the, on the steering column, which uh, I'm disappointed in. But, uh... So it cranks, so it should run. Now, it's not starting, because I assume it's a fuel. Old fuel, no fuel. So we're going to give it a little taste. Traditionally, fuel-injected vehicles don't like this stuff. The, the hot sauce, the go sauce. but we're gonna try it anyway. Let's try this again. Personally, I think it's still fuel, but uh, yeah, I guess we're gonna have to figure this out. Let's try this again. Well, that just confirmed it. It wants to start. It needs fuel, and there's something wrong with the fuel system. Well, there's a bad sign. I've only been underneath the truck for two minutes, and I already spotted that the fuel pump is completely off its mount. So someone's been toying with this thing, and now it's my job to figure it out. So here we are, a lot of messing around later. Ford, in their infinite wisdom, discontinued the O-ring. They can't find it. 
they can't find me a part number because they're useless. And none of the parts dealers like Napa or Pats or anything can find this O-ring. There's an O-ring that goes in here and then a sliding fitting, it just slides in with a, with a cheesy tin lock. You can't, it doesn't exist. And I've tried building O-rings, I've tried everything and I ended up welding a chunk of quarter inch pipe between the two and uh, quick wired this. It only leaks a little bit. Look at this classy setup. You just turn the fuel on. Look at it go. We are moving fuel. The question is, will it start? And I think we know the answer. Oh, well, if the battery connections weren't shitty. I mean, that's, that's just part of the fun, though. in a long time should you straighten out a drive shaft no can you dry straighten out a drive shaft also need to look at the drive shaft tube to make sure all the balance weights are still on and there's no dents in the shaft yes you can straighten out a bent drive shaft I mean is it gonna be structurally sound no do I care? No. One thing you need to notice is the nice seals that are inside the bearing cap and the other important factor is the amount of grease that's on the trunnion and in the cap is all you will ever need. I even found the U-joint caps. Now there's some rollers missing out of one and a seal, but what could go wrong? Notice there's a dent in the shaft that could affect the balance. The other feature is the balance weight. Now that right there is a good looking drive shaft. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine, do some good burnouts. What could possibly go wrong? And I'd like to take it for a test drive, but first we gotta get all the Chinese diamonds out of it. Using a Chinese vacuum, everybody wins. If this thing's gonna have any chance of doing a burnout, we gotta take the thousand pounds out of the box. It looks like the tires are low, but it's actually because there's about a thousand pounds on them and there has been for several years now. So uh, yeah, we'll take some weight out of the box and then we'll see if this bad boy will do burnout. So the answer, same as before, is we don't know if a bent drive shaft likes to party, but we're gonna find out. Alrighty, bent drive shaft test, or as they call it in uh, neutral drop. No verse, no verse, or verse.
Well, I have to say, all that crap about, oh, a bent drive shaft, a bent drive shaft. That bent drive shaft is taking it like a champ. We're gonna have to do more tests on this theory. So we've proven that the drive shaft on this thing can take some serious abuse. Now, there's still work to be done. I tried to sell this thing to somebody for the demo derby so that they could smash it up and that I could see how the drive shaft would take abuse in the derby, but I couldn't sell it in time and it never ended up selling. So now it just gets to sit here some more and we get to do some more torture tests to it. We just have to figure out what we're gonna do and uh, feel free to post some ideas. I'm curious as to, like obviously if you go down the road at 100 kilometers an hour, the drive shaft will fly off. I don't want to die, so I'm not even going to attempt that because I know the drive shaft won't handle high speed. That That's how you kill it, for sure. But uh, it can take some serious abuse, a bent drive shaft. I'm very impressed. Uh, on a side note, we've got some interesting stuff coming up. There's a Ranger that's going to get a twin turbo RX-7 engine. And then Heinz Creek. I would have already released a video for you guys, but... Uh, I blew the head gaskets making the video, so uh, yeah, once I get the head gaskets fixed, then we'll do that. Oh, and if you notice, look at the deck on that thing. Look at that sassy deck on that International. Things are coming along slowly but surely.